Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. First up, Theta collaborates with Chainlink to fight online video ad fraud. And this is big news for both of these cryptocurrencies. And the question really is asked, can Google and YouTube even keep up? Continuing on with that same thing, Chainlink emerges as top performer in Q3 2020. What does Q4 hold? We're going to take a look at price analysis and the different partnerships that are happening, as well as some poor reporting. Before we break in the market, I have to tell you that my man Freddie over at Shield Folio or Stonebook came through big time. He's given everybody a 15% off coupon if they want to purchase the Stonebook. Now, this thing's great. I've got it. It lasts forever. It's tear resistant, it's water resistant, it's chemical resistant, all that stuff. And it's where I keep all my private keys, my mnemonic phrases, my seed phrases, and everything else. And I just know that I'm not going to actually lose it. And it's just fantastic. So also, it's got this cool like James Bond thing where you can write an invisible ink and then uh, you know save all your different pass phrases. So I like that. So in the description of every one of my videos from now on, there's going to be a link and it's gonna look just like this. If you click on that, it's gonna shoot you over to Shield Folio. We're gonna take 15% off of the already low price. And uh, Freddie, I wanna say thanks so much because I've got this thing, it's fantastic. People ask me about it, I'm like, just go to Shield Folio. And uh, I've been bugging him for a while for this discount. He finally give it, uh, gives it to us, so uh, great. We'll take that and uh, off we go. So on top of that good news, let's take a look at the market. Huh? September 25th, it is about, uh, about 3 p.m. Texas time. And as usual, I'm falling behind because I can't seem to catch up. But Bitcoin is catching up a little bit, almost hitting that uh, 11K barrier, uh, roughly around 10.7. So I will take that market cap, almost hitting that 200 billion mark. Fantastic. Ethereum finally up above 350. I'll take it. Tether's Tether and XRP up a whopping 4.5%, 24 cents. Chainlink's up massively, 8.6%. Uh, and we're going to take a look at uh, Alex Mascioli had a couple of uh, pretty smart guys as far as TA analysis. And they were the ones that actually said that Chainlink would go down to 1050. When it was like 18, I was like, no, that's not going to happen. And here we are. So what can I say? Wrong again. And then we've got uh, Polkadot, 1.1% up. I mean, everything's up across the board. I like it. And Cardano, wow. Almost hitting that 10 cents marks. I like that, 17%. Let's see what else is big time. Stellar 5.6, uh, nothing too bad. 5% for VeChain, 10% for Ave. Very nice. 11 for synthetic. So finally, DeFi bounce. Finally, DeFi gets a little bit of a, a get of a pump. Just kidding. They always get pumps. So good for them. 10%. Uh, Whoa. Hey, Celsius Network is at number 50 or Celsius Celsius token. 87 cents. This is uh, going on a massive run and. If you know anything or have been on this channel, um, I believe in Celsius. I really like what they're doing over there. And I've got 30% of my portfolio in Celsius. So if you're looking for uh, information on them, look in the description of my videos. There's gonna be a link that looks just like this. And it's gonna send you to the spreadsheet and it's gonna go over everything. But uh, yeah, Celsius, wow, a big time. 45% for the week. And I think they've done over a billion in loans already. Um, somebody check me on that, but I could have sworn I saw that on the Twitterverse. What else we have? 10%, uh, nothing really too much. So, all right, so good for the market. We're not in a sea of red, but overall we're still down, um, but we'll see how it all works out. Let's jump into today's top story. So first up, this is actually uh, sent to me by Ivan McKeever. So thanks, Ivan, really appreciate it. He sent me this article, uh, which talks about Theta collaborates with Chainlink to fight online fraud. And uh, these are two of my holds, so I like to hear two of those stories. Now, um, just so you know, I'm biased. And uh, that's just the truth. I try not to be, I try to cover everything, but there's always something in the back of my head that's going, talk about this, talk about this, and here we are, Theta and Chainlink. But uh, really, it is a pretty great article. So first up, uh, Theta has been collaborating with Chainlink in the past several months, building an innovative blockchain-based technology to solve the multi-billion dollar ad fraud problem. And ad frauds are all over the place. Either there are a bunch of scammers out there, but what really happens is if you've ever used Google AdWords, I've uh, bought and sold uh, different ads for different my, my companies and, and different companies for Google AdWords. And I can tell you right now, uh, when somebody clicks on your ad for Google AdWords, it can cost you a ton of money. We're talking millions millions and millions of dollars and actually it's been it's been billions so you have to fight against that because what people will do 
your competitors, they will hire bots to click on your ads and those ads, every time you get a click, could be between a dollar and a hundred dollars, depending on what kind of industry you're in. And if you do that enough, well, you're out the game. And this is actually a pretty big solution for people like me, big businesses, and just people in general. So their solution, they talk about, uses Google's big data, big query to process video performance data, generate on the Theta network, and create a reputation score for each streamer based on their viewership. Chainlink oracles then broadcast the reputation scores to the Ethereum blockchain where they are stored as immutable records for online advertisers to reference when deciding where to allocate capital. So real quick, let's take a look at Theta. So this is Theta.tv, and this is all just a streaming service from everything from, you have you have anime, you have Fail Single. Army, you have crypto YouTubers, you have gamers. I mean, everything that you can think of is right here. And it's pretty co cool because it uses the Theta token, and you actually earn T-Fuel just for watching videos. And you can tip your favorite creators with Theta and it's, uh, I mean, RT fuel, and it's, it's, it works out pretty well. Sounds it's pretty nice. awesome. I like it. So what's great about this is as time moves on, YouTube is not the only game in town for creators. We just saw that with Joe Rogan as he moves over to Spotify. And this is another type of streaming service that could eat YouTube's lunch. Right now it's, it's streaming, but the plans are to be on-demand type of uh, movies, on-demand type of videos, pretty much just like how YouTube has it. And actually, I have a streaming key. I need to set this up and start streaming on Theta because it is actually one of my holds and I believe in what the project is doing. Anyhow, let's jump back. So for me, I think this is pretty cool as like an online advertiser, like I could go into all the data and just take a look at it and go, oh, I like this person, this person, this person specifically, and then go from there. Now you can kind of do that on, on YouTube. You can kind of do a lot of those things. You can actually advertise on specific videos, but it's a little cumbersome. And I like this whole process where they're talking about a reputation score for each streamer. So uh, that is why I really need to get on this. Anyhow, moving on. Our design, that state, combines the inherent capabilities of the Theta blockchain to redundantly validate video content data and Chainlink's ability to secure off-chain data delivery. With the benefits of data processing, provide advertisers a golden source of truth regarding online content viewership filtering out ad frauds and false metrics. So what are they talking about here? What are they saying about all this different fraud? So to skip ahead, it states, the difficulty derives from malicious content creators who are able to fake viewership data through the usage of click farms and non-human bots, ultimately inflating their click-through rate and tricking advertisers into thinking an advertisement was viewed by real users when in actuality it wasn't. So as an advertiser, there's nothing worse than looking at your return on ad spend, ROAD, and looking at that and go, wow, I didn't make any type of sales or very few sales for what I actually sold or you know, actually purchased. So this is the problem. And these types of streamers are doing these types of things, are not just streamers, but creators. And of course, you can't do that here in Theta. So I like that whole, that whole fact. And that's the whole thing with decentralization, open everything up, making things more transparent. And it states it's estimated that in 2019, the worldwide cost of digital ad fraud was 19 billion, and then it's gonna be 44 billion in 2022. And then going back uh, to what it says right here is that it, it talking about trend research shows that six out of 10 people now prefer online video platforms compared to live TV. And by 2025, it'll be over 50%. So I don't know about you, but uh, when I'm looking for entertainment or things to watch, it's usually YouTube or it is Netflix or Amazon Prime. I don't really turn the TV on that much anymore, except for sports. So I see where everything's going and it is away from the old model. Moving down, the solution we have engineered with Chainlink will be the first blockchain-based approach to reduce digital ad, ad fraud and increase the effectiveness of each dollar spent. So it's a funny thing, because if you really think about it, how can YouTube kind of compete with that? When you have all the different things that are going on in the background that will help for advertisers to actually get their an increased return on ad spend or ROAD or return on investment or whatever you want to call it. So that's a pretty good thing. But if you really look down at it, you have to understand that uh, who owns YouTube? It's Google. And who is partnered up with Theta? Google. So Google is not going to go away. <laughs> unfortunately. That's just how it is. Google is a huge multi-billion bordering on a trillion dollar company. I can't remember the actual um, price right now. But it, is, but it is one of those things where we try to get away from big business. We try to get away from big corporation. And what happens? We just fall right back into the same type of thing. And uh, 
with Theta, I mean, I think it'll be huge. I think it'll be big, but unfortunately, there'll be Google right behind it. And Google is, it just depends on how you see it. But um, I think for the space to move forward and advance, we need these big partnerships. Now, as time goes on, maybe they will be phased out, but um, I don't think so. I think they'll be around for quite a while, but uh, we will see. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. And this actually leads us into the next part, which when we talk about scammers, because there's scammers everywhere, there's scammers all over, all over YouTube. Uh, now we've even got scammers on CoinGecko, which is kind of odd. So let's jump into the office for Q of the day. Hello everybody and welcome back to the office for uh, Q and C of the day. There's gonna be some corrections from yesterday's video. So uh, the first one here, uh, the question of the day, uh, comes from Thomas. And Thomas says, hey Rob, uh, I think you'll love this one for your video. Here's the question, this exact moment on CoinGecko. There is one and exclusively one ad on top of the website that redirects this page claiming China has officially backed a cryptocurrency. So a couple things to unpack here. First of all, um, CoinGecko is my go-to place and I never see any ads on there because I use the Brave browser. If you don't have the Brave browser, check in the description, uh, download it, it works fantastic. You can get all the way through uh, the internet and I have to look at uh, ads, which I love. So uh, when I saw this, I'm like, they even have ads there? And of course, that's because I use Brave. So on there, you can clearly see there's an ad right there, smack dab in the middle. And it talks about how China has accepted a cryptocurrency. And when you click on that, there is a little article and it talks about how China officially backs crypto and establishes it as their official coin. And it looks like it's from Forbes, but in the actual um, address bar, it says super duper duper bit. So whatever. So right there, that's, that, that's a strike against it. And then uh, Thomas, that's definitely a scam. And of course he knows this. He just kind of sent, sent this to me as a tongue in cheek. And uh, he just said that he went there. He asked the people, you know, if that was really the deal. And of course they swore up and down that China has uh, their own cryptocurrency. So if you're not initiated and don't know, I mean, China does a lot of crazy things, right? So if you're not in this space, you're probably like, oh, sure, they did that. But uh, of course we know. And uh, the big thing I just want to get across is that if you ever think that is a scam or too good to be true, probably is. Always go to the official website if you can or, or do your own research. Or if you just can't figure it out, just send me a message uh, and I will 10 times out of 10 tell you it's a scam. Well, nine times out of 10. I mean, there actually is some good things out there. People actually asked me about, about the Uniswap airdrop and they thought it was a scam. I'm like, no, no, you're actually going to get uh, you know, tokens if you've ever used Uniswap. So it's one of those rare uh, occurrences. So that is that part for a Q of the day. And then uh, the next part I want to do, get into is correction of the day. And yesterday we did a video on Coinbase integrating um, with, with uh, USAA, which is my favorite bank. Um, I've had that bank since I was an 18 year old kid in the army and it's uh, just a fantastic, it's my personal uh, bank account. I have uh, business bank accounts and they all suck, but uh, it is what it is, but uh, USAA is fantastic. And when I did that video, it was pretty exciting to me. It was actually pointed out. I had never seen an integration before. However, on the Twitterverse, I had a nice uh, response from JS. JS, thank you for correcting me. He says, hey, and it's, well, he didn't really say anything. He goes, hey, here's the Coinbase blog from 2016. They had integrated this in 2016 with USAA. So, and I was, I looked at it and sure enough, uh, there it is. So I don't know if, if Coinbase had, um, or USA had integrated this in 2016 and then done away with it and then brought it back, or if it's been there the whole time, because I've never seen it. But uh, just, to, just to state the obvious, uh, uh, that was my fault. Uh, I didn't see it, so it's a correction on me and uh, I made a mistake on that one. However, um, it's still, to me, bullish news and it kind of opens up to different questions. First of all, has this always been there or do they take it away and then bring it back? And even if it's, if it's been there, there the, the whole time, Another question is, is uh, well, two more things, is why do they make it so hidden? Because, I mean, I look at that my account once a week for different things. I've never seen that, uh, that link or anything there. Now there it is. And the second thing was, is when I actually call, contacted customer service, they had no idea what I was talking about. And I was uh, transferred a couple of times and took over 20 minutes. So it's just a weird type of thing. And, uh, you know, why is this all uh, coming about now? Maybe they're gonna make this uh, more prominent and actually talk about it and actually put it out to the members. I get emails from them all the time, so uh, maybe this will be a bullish thing. But again, uh, this is not a new thing. Uh, that's an error on my part, so a little mess up. And the other uh, error, uh, I, did, I did a twofer uh, yesterday, and that was that um, for, I had said that for USAA, 
for members, uh, I said it seems like anybody can be a member now. And uh, just to just to clarify, to be a member at USAA, you either have to be active, retired, or honorably separated from from the military, uh, an officer, or you can be an adult children or adult child. <laughs> that sounds so weird. Just a children of a member, 18 plus years old, who have or had a USAA auto or property insurance, and the same thing with widows and widowers, uh, same type of thing. So um, these days, I mean, a lot of people have a military member in their family, so it works out like that. But uh, no, not every single person can be a USAA member, and that's it. So those are the two corrections, and that's the Q of the day. So uh, that's all for that. All right. So last up, Chainlink emerges as top performer in Q3. What does it mean for moving on to Q4? And this was, I thought, going to be a great article because it started off pretty good. It says Crypto Rank has taken a look at the performances of top cryptos for the quarter. Chainlink has emerged as the best performing asset. So we take a look at Q3. Uh, Chainlink is up plus 84%, or was up plus 84% in Q3. Uh, Polkadot, 58%. Binance Coin, Ethereum, Ripple. I don't know what Ripple is. Maybe XRP, uh, 33%. Crypto.com, Bitcoin, Litecoin. Bitcoin cash down to negative 2.5%. Oh, no. So uh, I'd like to see these little, you know, performances. Looks like Bitcoin is uh, still doing pretty good. Hopefully, it'll be the breakout star of next year, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. So I was into this this article, and then I'm like, oh great. And then I get down here and it says, uh, you know, Bitcoin can stay in the positive zone by Q3, and it just kind of does a little windbag type of uh, segment. And then it says, will Q4 be better? So listen to this. Q3 has recorded significant progress for these assets. Some of them went up by almost a zero. Uh, from Q2. The question is whether Q4 will do better. That is the question. So answer that. Just like September has had a bad reputation with Bitcoin, Q4 has been been a generally good quarter for Bitcoin. Its chance of reaching a new all-time high is, however, quite small, as according to a prominent analyst, which I'm sure is like, who knows, Joe Whale, Joe Coin Dog, who knows. Bitcoin's possibility of touching 20 grand by the end of the year is just about 15%. And that's it. That's the whole article. I was like, oh, man. So Pon Vang wrote that, and uh, Pon Vang, uh, I think you can do better. So I was kind of disappointed. However, it was actually a good thing because I caught Alex Mascioli's uh, live premiere. He talked about Cardano, Chainlink, and Theta, but how they're about to take off. If you don't know, I've been in Alex's show a couple times. I like this guy. He's got a lot of good information. He is traditional finance. He is head of uh, Bquant uh, Institutional Services, and he's the guy that knows pretty much the biggest players in crypto, as well as um, people who slosh around a lot of money, as might be called whales. So when I want some information as far as like what's going on in that in that market, I just send him a message and he pretty much just tells me exactly what's going on. But on this uh, episode, he had a couple of TA guys, Monty and CJ. And before we start, I'm just gonna say, I'm not a big believer in TA. I never have been, I'm just an investor. And it's probably because I don't understand it. So if you wanna invest and do TA, that's fine, that's cool and everything else. but. Uh, there's a couple things that Monty and CJ said, uh, and they're from Market Rebellion, and they had made some big calls lately. Uh, Monty here, or Matt uh, Montemayor, Montemayor, however you want to say his name, he called the Bitcoin downturn not too long ago, and I was like, no, it's going to keep going up. And he also called the link price when it was like $18 or something like that. He said it's going to go on $10.50, and I was like, this kid's crazy. But guess what? Here we are at like 1083. So he was right on the money. And what he's calling for now, him and CJ, uh, there's there, there could be a uptake to the swing of 25% for Chainlink. And he's also talking about, they, they're going to talk about Theta in the next uh, segment where they say that, hey, there's massive bullishness for Theta. And they lay it all out about why it could be. However, there's a catch, but it's pretty interesting. So I'm not going to go over it here. I'm just going to link at the very end. You can check it out. But I will just tell you this. Watch 12 minute 46 and the 15 12 mark those are the two big ones that uh these guys talk about and it's just interesting stuff so again i'm not going to talk about ta i'm not a ta person but these guys were pretty solid about what they talked about all right so that is it so just want to give some uh, random shout outs to people who have uh, joined up for digital asset news really appreciate it so i got uh denise chet mark garrity john carter tom cochran mark melissa davis dewitt brzezinski sam vasquez uh jess zadra bill ennis and bob all right so that's it so thanks so much for joining up really appreciate it if you like these types of videos i mean two more it's going to pop up on your left and right um i'm going to try to put in alex's video on one of them at least and then of course youtube will control the other part and that's it so uh thanks again for watching really appreciate it and uh, i will see you on the next one